Hi, thanks for coming to this session. In this session, we're going to discuss for the next 20 minutes the integration between Amazon EKS and AWS Fargate and how they work together. My name is Massimo Referé. I'm a principal developer advocate uh, in the container team at AWS. We only have 20 minutes, so we're going to go very quickly through um, some of the background uh, and the idea about this integration, the high-level flow, some of the implementation details, and then what we want to do is we want to show you how this actually uh, works. So let's get started. What is the idea here about integrating EKS and Fargate? If you're coming to this session, you're probably familiar with Kubernetes and to some extent maybe Amazon EKS. Amazon EKS is our managed Kubernetes service on AWS and the way it works is that we manage the control plane for you and we allow you to use that control plane to deploy pods, an application, on top of worker nodes or EC2 instances that run inside your account. These EC2 instances are typically configured with auto-scaling groups and um, technologies similar to that that allows you to uh, better use and scale in and out uh, those worker nodes based on the need. But the important point here is that these worker nodes or EC2 instances run inside your account. These worker nodes can be unmanaged like you manage them entirely, or we provide a managed worker node um, um, feature for Amazon EKS that take over some of this responsibility from you. The idea here is that in addition to being able to deploy pods on this traditional container data plane based on traditional worker nodes that runs in your account, you can now deploy your pods onto what we refer to a serverless container data plane, which Fargate represents. Fargate is a serverless service um, managed by AWS that allows you to forget about infrastructure details when it comes to deploy application. With AWS Fargate and EKS, you can deploy pods without having worker nodes. What I showed in the previous slide is essentially what we call the mixed mode operation, an EKS cluster that allows you to deploy at the same time to both Fargate capacity or EC2 based capacity in your account. It is also possible to configure an EKS cluster to only deploy on AWS Fargate. This is full serverless in the sense that Amazon EKS is a fully managed service. You don't see the, the master node running um, and backing this uh, control plane. And Fargate is fully serverless in the sense that you never get to have deal uh, with EC2 instances that are used to deploy your pods on. Let's get into some, some of the details about here, this high level flow and how it works. If you think about how the EC2 flow works when it comes to EKS, this is pretty much a picture. As I said, the contra plane and the master node runs inside our AWS account. You don't get to see those. You only see the endpoint. And then you have your customer account where you have your own VPC and you have your EC2 instances that represent the worker nodes. As I said before, these are typically tied together with an auto scaling group and stuff like that. So when you start deploying pods um, um, to this EKS cluster, you are essentially telling the control plane, can you run this container or can you run this pod? You don't actually explicitly say on EC2 because that is implied because EC2 capacity is what gives this EKS cluster the capacity to run these pods. So basically what happens in this case is that the control plane will pick one of these EC2 instances, it will instantiate the pod on that EC2 instance, and it will connect that pod somehow to the VPC through an ENI. 
usually it's a little bit more complex than this but for the sake of time this is the high level flow of how it works when you have EC2 instances running in your account. The important thing to understand here is that you have to manage those EC2 instances. Customer can to appreciate the fact that we manage for them the control plane and they're asking us to take more and more responsibility on the EC2 instances that are on in uh, their accounts. A partial answer to that was the Manage um, Worker Nodes feature uh, that we announced uh, later last year. But later last year, we also announced the integration with AWS Fargate. Let's see how this works when Fargate is injected into this picture. As I alluded to before, Fargate is a serverless data plane that we purposely built to run containers at scale at AWS. You don't get to see those EC2 instances or micro VMs. We run them in our own account. So basically in this case, the flow is if you come in with your pod and somehow we'll get to this in a minute, you tell this control plane, can you run this pod or container for me on Fargate? This is what happens. We will go out and source a proper EC2 instance or micro VM to run your pod. We will instantiate your pod on that instance or micro VM and we will attach that pod in a very similar way uh, to your VPC, similar to how you would do that with EC2. So from a wiring perspective, nothing really changes because the pod will show up as an entity in your VPC. But the compute capacity that you need to provide to be able to run those containers, you don't see that in your account. You don't have to manage it. You don't have to scale in. You don't have to scale out. You don't have to um, uh, worry about AMI uh, lifecycle. You don't have to do anything like this because basically now you can think about um, leveraging Kubernetes um, thinking about the pods and not the infrastructure. Let's get into some more implementation technical details about how we made this work. Obviously, you may be wondering at this point, how can you tweak Kubernetes to be able to deploy to something that doesn't actually exist? To do this, we introduced the notion of Fargate profiles templates um, in the EKS service. So basically, this is a new API that you can use to create and delete Fargate profiles. And the Fargate profiles tells uh, EKS a few things. The first one, probably the most important for this uh, short session, is what we call the pod selectors. So pod selectors are a combination of namespace and labels that allows EKS to catch the pod deployment. When there is a catch, EKS will know that it needs to deploy to Fargate instead of standard EC2 instances. In addition to these, the Fargate profiles provide information like which subnet do I need to connect this pod to and the personality of this pod or, or the kubelet actually because the kubelet needs to have an AWS personality or an EM role associated to it because the kubelet will need to be able to go and pull from ECR, for example, or stuff like that. These are some implementation details that I'm showing you on this screen. So imagine that you have an EKS cluster and you have configured this EKS cluster with some uh, worker nodes and capacity in your account. You also have configured this EKS cluster with a particular Fargate profile. This Fargate profile has a selectors, pod selectors, one in particular that says namespace equal prod and stack equal blue when it comes to labels. So let's make a uh, quick example. If you come in and you try to deploy a pod uh, using kubectl, for example, and you're trying to deploy this pod into a namespace called test, what happens is that 
on the Zcash cluster, there is going to be mutating and validating webhooks. They are going to spec this pod. They are going to ask EKS, do you have a match in one of your Fargate profiles for this pod that has namespace equal test? Since there is only one Fargate profile in this example, and the Fargate profile doesn't have a pod selector that matches what's coming in, the mutating and validating webhooks will just let the pod go through the traditional um, Kubernetes scheduler, through the traditional deployment path, and the pod will get instantiated on EC2 instances running in your account. Let's take a different example. You're trying to deploy the very same pod, but with different specifications. Like now you're trying to deploy that pod into a namespace called Proud and with the label of stack equal blue. The same mutating and validating webhooks will ask again EKS, do you have a matching selector for um, this pod that I'm trying to deploy? EKS will provide the mutating and validating webhooks uh, with the Fargate profile that I've just uh, discussed. And the mutating and validating webhooks will figure out that there is actually a match. So they will mutate the pod to include additional information like the profile that I'm going to use and the scheduler name. This is a custom Fargate scheduler that we purposely built um, to be able to do this. So in that case, the Fargate, the custom Fargate scheduler will deploy this pod onto the Fargate fleet. What you see here is how you extend Kubernetes by the book. We obviously didn't have the option of forking Fargate and modifying Fargate to be able to change the scheduler behavior. So what we have done is we have extended um, Kubernetes to be able to say, I want to be able to discriminate whether you want this pod to be deployed on standard EC2 instances or Fargate. And based on your intent, I'm going to use the standard Kubernetes scheduler or a custom scheduler that exists inside um, EKS. Now we are at this point, let's take a look at how this actually um, works for real. This is a Cloud9 instance that I use um, to demonstrate or um, uh, work with the, these technologies. The first thing that I wanted to show you is how easy it is to deploy an EKS cluster with Fargate. So we use EKS CTL as our uh, preferred common line to create and delete uh, Kubernetes EKS clusters. And this is the CLI that I have used to deploy a cluster called EKS Fargate with the flag dash dash Fargate. We'll see in a second what that flag does to this cluster. But basically, it takes a few minutes uh, to deploy this cluster. This is, this is the reason for which um, I deployed this um, offline. It, it took a few minutes, so I didn't want to steal from uh, the session. But basically, at the end of this command, what you will have is an EKS cluster called EKS Fargate, Kubernetes version 1.17, which is the default now with EKS CTL, and this cluster is active. If I go into the EC2 instance view in my account, what you see here is that there isn't any EC2 instance that is baking uh, that cluster. I only have a, a couple of uh, Cloud9 environment that I use, uh, but I don't have any um, worker nodes running in my account. So let's see what happens when I start interacting with this cluster. This is a brand new cluster, so it doesn't have um, anything other than uh, the core DNS pods. Now, you may wonder, where are these Kubernetes uh, pods running if there isn't any EC2 instance backing them? 
this is the whole purpose about um, the Amazon EKS and AWS Fargate integration. If I query the nodes here, what I will see is I will see a couple of nodes actually. They are called Fargate IP192 something, which represents my internal IP schema for my um, uh, environment. And if I go and dig into this, I will see that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between these Fargate um, uh, instances and my two pods that are running. So let's take this um, example here. I have a very super simple pod that I'm trying to deploy here uh, with the replicas equal uh, one. And I'm deploying this into the default namespace. So let's do this. Let's say kubectl apply my file. Okay, I'm creating my deployment now. So if I query the pod, I see that there is one new pod coming in, my, my web deployment, in the default namespace, and the status is pending. What it is happening now is what I described in my previous slide. So basically, um, uh, the EKS cluster is going to query um, the uh, Fargate profile that I have up and running in this cluster. There is a match. We'll see that in a minute. And so it's going to deploy this onto the Fargate fleet. It will take a few seconds to source an instance from the Fargate fleet and deploy this pod, but if you keep um, refreshing this, you will see that in a few seconds this pod will be up and running. Actually, the other thing that is interesting to see is that a node is coming online, a new node is coming online. This represents a node that is going to, uh, to provide the capacity to run my pod. And you see now the pod is running. As you can see, I didn't have to deploy anything in terms of EC2. And just to be clear, this is not cluster autoscaling kicking in. There is no cluster or worker nodes here to scale in and out. As a matter of fact, if I refresh here, there isn't any new EC2 instance. This is, you can think of this as a virtual representation of a EC2 instance that is running in the AWS account that is used to back uh, this pod. The other interesting thing that I could do here is I could change this deployment type so that I want to have five replicas. If I apply here, the same. Now this is being reconfigured to spin up four additional pods. If I query the pods here, I see that they're coming up, they're pending right now. It will take a few seconds to be able to deploy uh, these pods into um, onto this cluster. I want to make sure that you grab that this is not cluster autoscaler. This has nothing to do with cluster autoscaler in the sense that there isn't any EC2 instance that I'm running. Having this said, however, uh, EKS and Fargate works very, very well with uh, horizontal pod autoscaler so that you can create roles to scale in and out the pod without having to think about scaling in and out the infrastructure. So what happened here is that now my containers are coming up, they're starting to run. And what happened in the background is that these, um, uh, these integration went out into the fleet. We sourced new um, EC2 instances or micro VMs to back this pod and these pods are now up and running. As you can see, it will take a few, an additional few seconds to run this, but this is um, how the integration works.
So as I said, uh, we only had some 20 minutes um, to discuss this, so we wanted to uh, keep it short, give you a high-level overview of how it works. Um, we wanted to also show you how this works um, in practice. Um, and these are a few additional resources that you can refer to um, and call to action. So there is a blog that talks about uh, this integration, a blog that uh, we posted when we announced this integration uh, back in December um, 2019. There is a one-hour deep dive that we did at uh, reInvent 2019 that goes into some more details about how this integration works uh, and it covers other aspects uh, like, for example, how you size uh, those pods uh, because you don't have EC2 instances that you uh, can size. So how do you size those pods? And my suggestion, if you want to get started, is to uh, jump onto the EKS and Fargate Getting Started Guide uh, at the link here, um, which allows you to get started in a matter of minutes. With this being said, thank you very much for coming to uh, this session. These are my um, contact details. Uh, reach out to me via email or Twitter. Um, I'm mrefere at amazon.com or at mrefere on Twitter. Uh, feel free to reach out, uh, comment uh, about these, questions about these. Happy to, happy to help and um, have a great day. Thank you very much.